It might look like specks of dirt stuck in a web, but a closer look, and you'll see it's actually hundreds, if not thousands, of spiders. In forgotten corners of houses and sheds across coastal Australia, there's a silent invasion taking place in the shadows, and leading the charge is one of the weirdest spiders on Earth. My name is Spencer Hoffman. I'm a biologist and filmmaker from North Carolina searching for the world's most extreme creatures, and my hunt takes me to the suburbs of Sydney investigating a creature that pushes spider biology to its absolute limit. This arachnid breaks almost every rule we think of when it comes to spiders, and to find out why, I'm going to be searching in one of the most unconventional habitats I've ever filmed. Picture a habitat. What's the first thing that comes to mind? A forest? An ocean? A desert? What if a single tree could be a habitat? Or a rock? Or, and, and hear me out, what if your house was a habitat? We're not alone in our homes. No matter how much we clean, there will always be little things slipping through the cracks, finding shelter in our walls. Because a habitat really boils down to the types of structures and conditions that exist in an area, and how living things use them. Your house is almost like a man-made cave. It's dry, has a relatively stable climate, and it provides shelter from the elements. Our early ancestors figured that out, and it's why we're so comfortable today. But if we're comfortable, you can bet there are other things that enjoy the comforts of our homes too. And if you know where to look, you'd be surprised at the odd creatures you can find. Right behind me is a pile of old abandoned equipment. You can see it's been weathered. It's been out here for a while. And that means it's been a part of the environment long enough for little creepy creatures to see it as cover. See, a lot of these really small secretive invertebrates, they rely on structure for shelter, safety, and cover. And in many parts of Australia, outside your house, a pile like this is perfect for one of the strangest spiders in the entire world. Now, at first glance, it looks just kind of like cobwebbing that might have even been there for ages, but if you look a little bit closer, there are actually these discs, these orb-shaped discs, and in the center of those discs are these kind of odd little shaped pieces of debris. It looked like a, a chunk of dirt or something, but a closer look reveals this is actually a spider. What we're looking at here is a large colony of one of the strangest spiders on Earth and one of the few spiders that actually live in social groups. Australia is known for its spiders. We've all seen the viral videos of giant huntsmen showing up in people's cars and the iconic threat pose of the deadly funnel web burying its fangs and warning of its toxic bite. We might think of the brilliant colored redback, the most venomous of the widow spiders. From an outside view, Australian spiders seem like living nightmares, but it's the really strange ones that we don't hear about that hide some of the coolest secrets. And the spider we're looking for today is among Australia's most unusual, a tiny little spider that swarms in dark corners of sheds and houses, the social house spider. An arachnophobe's worst nightmare, these spiders don't have intimidating size or venom like the funnel webs or huntsmen, but live in massive groups, something that is rarely seen among spiders. Spiders are predators, and they're very opportunistic. Web builders like orb weavers and cobweb spiders build their webs hyper-strategically in fly-through zones that maximize the possibility of catching insects. Active hunters like the jumping spiders, the wolf spiders and wandering spiders, have incredible intelligence, vision, speed, and even in some cases, venom potency to make sure that when they do encounter something, they can actually kill and eat it. But to a spider, insects aren't the only thing on the menu. Spiders are more than happy to eat other spiders, which means they tend to live by themselves. If there's a good chance that a larger spider might see you as food, you've got a better chance of surviving on your own than living in a group. In fact, cannibalism among spiders is so common that some of the most iconic spiders are named after the fact that they eat their own kind. There are many species of widow spider where the female eats the male after mating, and this isn't unique to widow spiders. Many jumping spiders have evolved complex mating dances to signal to females that yes, they are suitors, not food, because otherwise they would have a pretty hard time propagating their species. If you're a spider, living in a group with other spiders is a massive, massive risk. So we almost 
never see it. Which begs the question, what is so different about the social house spider that living in massive colonies is more advantageous than living by themselves? Across the animal kingdom, the creatures of our planet find strength in numbers. Birds move in flocks. Many mammals travel in herds. Fish swim together in schools. Even insects have developed social behaviors, like the way bark lice graze on shaded trees, or how entire ant colonies function as a single super organism. All entirely separate lineages, and yet we see the same results. The animals that stick together are very successful. Social behavior keeps animals safe from predators, reducing the probability that any one individual is gonna be picked off by a predator. And it helps social predators too. Hunting in groups gives you a better chance of securing your kill. And while you have to share, at least you get to eat. But where these spiders get really weird is they're not active hunters. They passively wait for prey to come to them. So for them to have evolved these communal webs, they must be hiding some other secret. These spiders are absolutely tiny. And with their bizarre looking shapes and all that patterning, modeling, and texturing they have, they literally look just like debris. That's kind of on purpose. See, it serves as camouflage. When they're living inside that crazy looking colony web matrix thing, they look just like a piece of debris that's been caught in a cobweb. And it makes you think that it's an abandoned web. And that's perfect for ambushing their prey. Like other orb weavers, they're building their webs strategically in places where the insects will be zipping through, but the webs of these orb weavers are not sticky. They're actually designed to be super, super tangled. So rather than being an adhesive trap, it's almost more like a snare. And the way these spiders eat is even weirder. See, typically we talk about spiders being venomous when they're dangerous to people, but most spiders are actually venomous, except for these guys. The social house spider belongs to the family Uloboridae. Their name, comes from the Greek legend Ouroboros, a serpent that ate its own tail to form a loop, and refers to the shape of their webs. Like many spider families, this geometric orb shape seems to be one of the best ways to capture insects, but the way that Ouroboros spiders do it is entirely different. Not only is the web structure entirely different from other spiders, these hackled orb weavers kill their prey in a completely unique way. Typically, spiders bite their kills, injecting venom that immobilizes and ends the life of their prey before they begin to eat. Even though the vast majority of spiders are harmless to humans, most of them are venomous, except Uloboridae. Somewhere along their evolutionary history, these spiders lost their venom glands. So to kill their catches, they have to use brute force. The hackled mesh of their web is perfect for interlocking and squeezing the life out of small insects. And we see this in Uloborids across the world. It's honestly kind of gnarly. You'd think venom would be a kinder way to dispatch their prey. While the light fades from the insect's eyes, the spider then begins to vomit digestive fluids all over its body, disintegrating it from the outside in as the spider begins to feed. The world of the Uloborid spider is quite unsettling, but this might help explain why these spiders found strength in numbers after all. See, these spiders aren't just coincidentally inhabiting the same large web. They actually interact and cooperate. These large, tangled messes of webs sometimes trap larger insects too. Insects too large for one spider to dispatch on its own. Using the power of teamwork, multiple spiders have been seen actually working on the same kill, enabling these communal webs to capture meals that feed the entire brood and not just one spider. It's super, super gnarly. Honestly, in many cases, I would say that venom is probably a little bit more humane than what these guys are doing. But that is one very, very unusual and very special spider. Something I was hoping to see here in Australia and was actually surprised that it's one of our last days here. We're just poking around the yard and found a big colony just around the shed that we've been doing our laundry in every single day of the trip. Who would have thought? And these spiders are super common, which makes it weird how little we actually know about them. Living in forgotten corners, in gnarled, abandoned looking webs, I guess we just sort of overlooked them. But at the end of the day, it's these overlooked spots that end up hiding some of the coolest secrets. Odds are, lurking in your backyard, even closer to you than you'd think, in yet another overlooked habitat, is one of the strangest creatures on Earth. 
If there's even a tuft of moss or a chunk of lichen around, I guarantee you're sharing space with the nearly invincible tardigrade. And if you want to learn more about those incredible things, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.